Hey everyone, Brad here today from the OFAH Heritage Center. Today's lesson is all about terrestrial mustelids. Mustelids are members of the weasel family. In today's lesson, we'll aim to answer five questions all about terrestrial mustelids. How do we identify a mustelid? Where do they live? What do they eat? What are mustelids known for? And can you harvest a mustelid in Ontario? Stick around as we learn today all about terrestrial mustelids. How do we identify a terrestrial mustelid? Terrestrial mustelids are members of the weasel family, and Ontario's include martens, fishers, wolverines, badgers, and weasels. Terrestrial means that these creatures spend most of their time on land. Mustelids vary in appearance, but do have some common traits. They're mostly small animals with long bodies and short legs. They have short skulls with round ears and they have thick fur. Mustelids are mostly solitary and they're typically found alone. They're nocturnal which means they're mostly active at night and they rest during the day. Mustelids are also active year round, meaning they do not hibernate. They are carnivores and have well-developed, strong teeth to consume tough animal meat. They have between 28 to 40 teeth in their mouth depending upon the species. They also have well-developed canine teeth to help them rip through food. Here are Ontario's five species of terrestrial mustelids. How many do you know? Fishers. Fishers have small necks and wedge-shaped heads. They have short, heavy legs, sharp claws, and a long, bushy tail that tapers towards the end. Their pelt, or fur, ranges in color from grayish-brown to black and is lighter on the sides and darker towards the rump and tail. Their face, neck, and shoulders are often frosted with gray or pale brown. Fishers measure between 75 to 120 centimeters from nose to tail, and they weigh from 1.8 to 5.5 kilograms. Martins have a long, slender body, a small head with a short, pointed muzzle. They have large, rounded ears and dark brown eyes. Martin's legs are short, and their paws have large furred pads with semi-retractable claws, much like a cat's. Their bushy tail is about half the length of their body. Although individual martins may vary from yellow to black, their color is usually a golden brown, with their head being lighter in color and their legs darker. Their throat and chest have a yellow-orange patch, and the edges of a martin's ears are white. Martins measure between 46 to 63 centimeters in length, and they weigh from 450 to 900 grams. There are three varieties of weasels in Ontario. The short-tailed weasel, also known as the ermine, the long-tailed weasel, and the least weasel. The least weasel is the world's smallest carnivore at between 10 to 20 centimeters in length and 30 to 200 grams in weight. The other two types of weasels are slightly larger, ranging from 19 to 56 centimeters in length and weighing between 40 to 300 grams. All three types of weasels have sharp teeth, small eyes, and small, rounded, fully haired ears. They also have well-developed senses of sight, smell, and hearing. All these weasel species also have brown backs with white or lighter yellow undersides during the warmer months. In the winter months, their fur changes color and they change to an entirely whitish color. Least weasels have no black tip on their tail. The long-tailed weasel's tail is more than 10 centimeters long, with the ermine's tail being much shorter. As I'm sure you can imagine, a simple way to identify the different weasel species 
is by looking at their tails. Ontario is also home to wolverines. These are the biggest types of weasels found in Ontario, and they're about the size of a medium-sized dog. Wolverines have dark, shaggy fur. Their fur varies in color from brown to black, sometimes carrying light patches on the chest, neck, and chin. Wolverines' heads are broad and rounded, with black extending from the eyes to the tip of the snout, and often with a light-colored band across their forehead. They have a short, stout neck, broad forehead, small eyes, and short, rounded ears. Adult wolverines usually weigh between 7 to 21 kilograms. Their body length ranges from 65 to 105 centimeters, and their tail varies between 17 to 26 centimeters. Males can grow to be about twice the size of females. Ontario is also home to badgers. Badgers are a medium-sized member of the weasel family, but they are slightly smaller than wolverines. This species is gray with black and white stripes on their face and head. Badgers have a long body with short legs, strong claws, and they have transparent eyelids to protect their eyes from dirt. All of these traits allow them to dig dens as well as to dig prey out of their burrows. Badgers have a length of 50 to 80 centimeters head to tail and weigh between 6 to 12 kilograms. Where do they live? Terrestrial mustelids are found all across Ontario, but some species are more common. Some species are found throughout the province, while others are only found in specific regions. Different mustelid species are adapted to different lifestyles. Most of the ones we're talking about today are fully terrestrial, but there are mustelid species that are semi-aquatic or fully aquatic. Check out our other video on aquatic mustelids to learn more about our semi-aquatic and aquatic species, the river otter and the mink. Weasels are found throughout the province of Ontario. Weasels are typically found near water. They prefer woodlands and open countryside such as farmland. Weasels live in dens and prefer their dens in holes in home piles, log piles, underblown down trees, in fence rows, as well as along the banks of water bodies. These dens usually have three to four tunnels connecting them to the outside world. Their dens are found about 15 centimeters below ground, and they're lined with insulating materials, such as the fur of mice or other prey, or with fine grass and leaf fragments. Fishers are highly adaptable, meaning they can live in a variety of places. They only really require a reliable food source to choose a place to live. Fishers prefer dense forest habitat and they will avoid open areas because they are quite elusive creatures. Hollow trees, logs, holes in rocky ledges, under large boulders, brush piles, and even old porcupine dens are common den sites for fishers. One of fishers' favorite spots for a nesting den is high in a hollow hardwood tree. Martins prefer coniferous and mixed forests. They'll avoid burned over areas and log and clear cuts. They prefer this denser habitat as it provides great cover and good habitat for them to hunt. Martin will den in hollow trees, under logs and rock crevices, and even in old squirrel nests. Wolverines are what we call habitat generalists. This means they can thrive in a wide range of habitats. In Ontario, they do have a limited range and live only in the boreal forests of the northernmost part of the province. Wolverines ensure that their habitat is far away from human settlements, that there's plentiful snow cover throughout the winter, and there is a constant food source available. Wolverines' dens are constructed under fallen or blown down trees covered with snow, in burrows, caves, overhanging riverbanks, 
or in tunnels in snowdrifts. Badgers occupy habitats such as grassland, open forests, farmland, and fields. Soil is a major factor in where badgers can live. Sandy or loamy loose soil is preferred. They live in large underground dens and this soil helps them to establish these dens fairly easily. Badgers only exist in two areas of Ontario. They live in spots along the northern coast of Lake Erie and in northwestern Ontario in the Rainy River and Fort Francis areas. There are estimated to be less than 250 badgers in the province. What do they eat? Mustelids are carnivores, which means they've adapted to eat a diet of strictly meat. They consume other mammals, birds, amphibians, reptiles, fish, crayfish, mollusks, and insects. Despite being classified as carnivores, some mustelids have been seen feeding on plants, fruits, and eggs. Fishers, although noted for their hunting of porcupines, one of the few creatures that do, also eat and control populations of squirrels, chipmunks, hares, and other small mammals. Surprisingly, fishers have even been known to hunt small deer. Martins prey on birds, insect, and small mammals, particularly moles and mice. Their diet can also include rabbits, squirrels, chipmunks, and carrion of various kinds. Carrion means other dead animals that they find in the forest. Weasels prey on mice, rats, rabbits, chipmunks, frogs, lizards, snakes, birds, bats, insects, and earthworms. Weasels also eat birds' eggs and will attack chickens and their coops if openings are available. I have a good friend who had a small hole in his barn last year and a weasel got in and killed all of his chickens. Weasels are really good hunters. They stalk their prey persistently, tracing scent and then pouncing once they're a few feet away. Weasels can eat the equivalent of one third or more of their weight within 24 hours. This means they often kill and hunt more than is necessary and they cache or store the leftovers in their burrows. Wolverines can take advantage of a wide variety of foods but are best known as scavenging predators. They rely mostly on scavenging during the winter which means they're constantly on the lookout for other dead animals and convenient food sources to claim as their own. They are carnivores, but when food is scarce, wolverines will feed on berries, fruit, eggs, and insects. In some instances, wolverines can kill larger animals than themselves, such as deer, moose, or caribou, but this isn't very common. Badgers are known as fossorial carnivores. This means they're adapted to digging and they often dig to pursue prey into their dens and sometimes they even plug tunnel entrances of their prey with objects to stop their prey from escaping. Their usual diet consists of voles, mice, chipmunks, gophers, squirrels, birds, lizards, snakes, insects, and surprisingly even skunks. What are they known for? Mustelids all have scent glands that produce a musky strong scent. Some people say that this scent smells worse than a skunk. Their scent glands exist under their tails. And some mustelids, such as fishers and martens, have two sets of glands, with secondary glands being located on their bellies or rear legs. Mustelids use the odor from their glands to mark their territory, discourage or harm predators, and for selecting mates for breeding. Our last question today is, can you harvest terrestrial mustelids in Ontario? The answer is both yes and no. Mustelids are fur-bearing mammals and the target of many trappers. 
It is important that trappers are up to date on all legal requirements for trapping set out in the Fish and Wildlife Conservation Act. To legally trap in Ontario, you must possess a valid outdoors card with hunter accreditation and a trapper's license. If you trap with a firearm, you must also carry a federal firearms license. Some mustelids, such as the weasel, have no closed trapping season nor a quota. Others, such as the fishers, are limited to one fisher for every 25 square kilometers to ensure sustainable populations. Even more extreme are wolverines. It is illegal to kill or harm these animals as they are protected under the Endangered Species Act. This means that there is a permanent closed season on trapping wolverines. Ontario's badgers are similar. They're endangered and exceedingly rare, and it is definitely illegal to trap or kill a badger. I hope today you've learned some interesting and valuable information about terrestrial mustelids. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like this video and comment below. Don't forget to check out the resources section on our webpage. When you go there, you'll find free printable resource material like mini lessons and activity pages to follow up the virtual lesson. And please subscribe to stay connected as we learn together outside the classroom.